This is the Improve and Have Fun podcast, where I'm improving myself, having fun along the way, with the hopes of encouraging you to do the same. These are weird stories for the week of April the 11th, 2017. Story number one, Elon Musk to connect brains with computers, download thoughts. This is a story from, this is a story from The Verge. The subtitle being Rockets, Cars, and Now Brain Chips. I'll read you a paragraph or two here. SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk is backing a brain computer interface venture called Neuralink, according to the Wall Street Journal. The company, which is still in the earliest stages of existence, has no public presence whatsoever, is centered on creating devices that can be implanted in the human brain with the eventual purpose of helping human beings merge with software and keep pace with advancements in artificial intelligence. These enhancements could improve memory or allow for more direct interfacing with computing devices. Very interesting. We're talking about like the Borg or we're talking about like a I don't know why, but this makes me think of uh, Starship Troopers when they talk about Clandathu and the brain bug. James Altucher, and I know I go on about James Altucher a lot. I just I enjoy his material. He recently did an uh, interview with Yuval Harari, uh, the author of Sapiens. And he has a new book which talks about us combining with machines. And it's very interesting. I'm going to go ahead and do like a little sublink to this story, to that podcast interview, where uh, in the interview, they talk about regular people may not be able to afford to combine with technology in order to advance, that the price for this may be super high, and that may be where the new discrimination, I will link to this uh, podcast interview, definitely check it out, it's very interesting, so that's one article, let's move on to the next one here. The second one is man's last name too offensive for license plate. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, read the article here. These articles are all linked in the blog post on the blog at uh, improveandhavefun.com. In Halifax, Nova Scotia, a Canadian provincial government has withdrawn a man's eponymous personalized vehicle license plate saying Lorne Grabber's surname which is offensive to women when viewed on his car bumper. And uh, it literally is grab her, like it's spelled G-R-A-B-H-E-R. Grab her. Crazy. Mr. Grabber said Friday that he put his last name on the license plate decades ago as a gift for his late father's birthday and says the province's refusal to renew the plate last year is unfair. Grabber says the Nova Scotia government is discriminating against his name, speaking about discrimination. That's one story there. The next one, the world's most X-rated restaurant. This is on the New York Post by way of uh, the sun.co.uk. Many restaurants are now seeking to set pulses racing as well as satisfying hunger pangs. Here are some of the world's steamiest restaurants that let people indulge in both dining and sex at the dinner table. Wow. One restaurant here is uh, the Robot Restaurant in Tokyo. Neon lights, scantily clad waitresses, and sexualized robots. The Robot Restaurant sure knows how to turn heads. The unusual dining spot is filled with mirrors, video screens, and robots that staff climb on. Another sexy restaurant is a Bikini Beans Espresso in Washington. It may be a cafe instead of a restaurant, but Bikini Beans Espresso has also been causing a stir. The cafe's uniforms have very little to the imagination, and the women wearing everything from tiny bikinis to, or underwear to simply having colorful stickers covering their nipples. Hello. One more restaurant I'll cover here is a Care in Beijing. Uh, the creators of Care thought they would combine two things almost everyone enjoys, sex and food, at their restaurant. Waiters in the Beijing eatery serve guests with fake breasts as part of their uniform, and drinks are served in boob-shaped cups. And there's a picture of it on the article here. and There's some uh, pretty big boobs. Next story here. Parrots make other parrots laugh. Okay. 
This is on the National Geographic website, the news section here. The news! Uh, shout out to Kenny Knapsack on uh, the Schmoes No show. The key of New Zealand is a first non-mammal species to demonstrate infectious laughter, a new study says. There's a picture of uh, the bird here. Forget the laughing kookaburra. Key are the birds that really tickle each other's funny bones. The highly intelligent parrot has a specific call that, like human laughter, puts other parrots that hear in a good mood. This makes the key the first known non-mammal to show contagious emotion, joining the ranks of humans, rats, and chimpanzees. Scientists already knew that key, native to New Zealand's mountainous South Island, make a non-threatening warbling sound while playing with other key. But since the birds also warble alone, the noise could simply be an expression of pleasure. To find out if key use their play call to spread emotion among other key, researchers led by Raoul Schwing of the Messerly Research Institute in Austria went to Arthur's Pass National Park and broadcast recordings of several bird calls in the earshot of wild key. The team observed how the wild key reacted to each sound. The effect was clear. When key of both sexes heard play calls, they exhibited more and longer play behavior than when they heard the other calls. Very interesting. Parrots making other parrots laugh. The next story. Man has sex with fence. All right. Texas man arrested for allegedly having sex with a fence. This is on the New York Daily News dot com. They had an emotional link, okay, pun intended, I'm sure, giving new meaning to the term hopping the fence. A resident of Austin, Texas, was arrested after his neighbor claims she saw him making love to the chain link fence that separates their two properties. According to the Smoking Gun website, Diana Vasquez spotted Eliodoro Estala begin the chain link courtship wow, by urinating on the fence late Wednesday morning. Yikes, okay. Vasquez then began recording Estella as he started yard-working it by taking his clothes off, Jesus, proving that chivalry isn't dead. The 32-year-old North Austin man put his mouth inside the chain-link fence and stuck his tongue, moving it up and down. The police report says, well, he really was going in on this uh, chain-link fence. All right. Next story. Study finds second opinion. From Dr. Nett's different diagnosis 88% of the time. Wow. This is on studyfinds.org. When it comes to treating a serious illness, two brains are better than one. A new study finds that nearly 9 in 10 people who go for a second opinion after seeing a doctor are likely to leave with a refined or new diagnosis from what they were first told. Researchers at the Mayo Clinic examined 286 patient records of individuals who had decided to consult the second opinion, hoping to determine whether being referred to a second specialist impacted one's likelihood of receiving an accurate diagnosis. The study, conducted using records of patients referred to by the Mayo Clinic's General Internal Medicine Division, over a two-year period ultimately found that when consulting a second opinion, the physician only confirmed the original diagnosis 12% of the time. Very interesting. The next story. Adult theme parks of the future similar to the Westworld TV show. This is on the dailymail.co.uk. The headline is, Adult theme parks where you can get drunk and shoot robots, digital drugs, and spray on clothes. Tech firm reveals its vision of life in 2050. Some of the subtitles underneath the headline. Futurologists, researchers, artists, and scientists teamed up to capture a very realistic view of what is yet to come. Predictions are of what life will be like in 2050, which includes spray on clothes and digital drugs. Experts suggested human and robot relationships will be common and we won't ever have to wash our socks. Apartments will be self-arranging. Skyscrapers will stand 30 miles high, but everything will be hackable. Very interesting. There's that full article there on the dailymail.co.uk there. Next weird story is sleep is the new status symbol. 
This is on the New York Times dot com. And uh, let me read you a couple of paragraphs here as at MIT's media lab, the digital futurist playground. David Rose is investigating swaddling, bedtime stories, and hammocks, as well as lavender oil and cocoons. Mr. Rose, a researcher and inventor, entrepreneur, and the author of Enchanted Objects, Design, Human Desire, and the Internet of Things, and his colleagues have been road testing weighted blankets to induce a swaddling sensation and listening to recordings of Icelandic fairy tales. All research into an ideal sleep environment that may culminate in a nap pod or, as he said, some new furniture form. Meanwhile, at the University of California in Berkeley, Matthew P. Walker, a professor of neuroscience and psychology and the director of the Sleep and neuroimaging lab there is working on direct current stimulation as a cure for sleeplessness and the aging brain. Dr. Walker is also shifting through the millions of hours of human sleep data he has received from Sense, a, a delicately lovely polycarbonate globe designed to look like the National Stadium in Beijing that measures air quality and other intangibles in the bedroom, then suggests tweaks to help you sleep better. That article, once again, is in the New York Times Sleep New Status Symbol. A second to last story is the headline for this particular episode. Dead bat found inside packaged salad in Walmart. This is on Macon.com. And here are a few paragraphs. Fresh Express recalled its organic market-side spring mix from Walmart stores in the southeastern United States Saturday because a dead bat was found in a packaged salad in Florida. At the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's recall chart notes, if there is a possibility of bat body parts, there is a minimal risk of rabies contamination. Yikes. The CDC as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, says it's working with the FDA and the Florida Department of Health to investigate the situation. Yikes. Dead bad parts. My goodness, what, what happened there? Now, the final story for this week, the final weird story, is kidults. Toys are not only for kids. All right. This is, once again, on the telegraph.co.uk. For Rob Wilner, when work finishes, playtime begins. He likes nothing more than when he gets home of an evening than to kick off his shoes and upturn a crate of sleek Scandinavian Lego. He says, It's not like I'm obsessed with it, but there's a simplicity to Lego models that's quite nice. To clear your mind and help it focus a little bit. He says, Only a touch sheepishly. Wilner is 25 years old and combines studying for a PhD in anthropology and religion at the University of Kent with youth work in North London, where he lives with his wife, Adele, a teacher, and he is not alone in this childish after-work habits. According to new research conducted by the NPD Group, a retail analyst, sales of toys to adults have increased by almost two-thirds over the past five years and by more than 20% in just the last year. As a result, the Toys for Adults market, which, by the way, is a careful Google search, best done at home, is now worth £300 million for this article, which is out of the UK, so they're doing everything in pounds there. £300 million and said to be growing three times faster than the children's toy market itself. As with most things, millennials are largely to blame. Uh, as with most things, millennials are largely to blame. I think that's a bad way to put it there. More than half of the kid adult, and it's spelled K-I-D-U-L-T, spend comes from the 18 to 34-year-olds, snapping up everything from 500-pound Scalex trick sets to drones, Nerf guns, and 2,000-pound Star Wars Lego models. Jesus. For some, it's a chance to recapture the careless raptures of childhood, while for others, it's a chance to escape the hassle and hardships of adult life, akin to other mindfulness aids like adult coloring books and dot-to-dot. -dot. For Wilner, it's both. And that is the last story there for this week in Weird Stories. 
If you found any of this interesting, of course, please comment below as to wherever you may be reading this or seeing this or hearing this or go on to the blog and comment. That will be amazing. Like I said, your commenting is the same as me putting out these podcasts. It's me just putting my spin on this information that I find interesting. And I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much for listening. Catch you on the next one.